Hello students, welcome back to your history class. I am Mrs. Jenny Shah. We are doing question and answers of chapter Changing Cultural Traditions, chapter 7. Today we are doing chapter, oh sorry, question number 6. We have completed up to question number 5. So now we are doing question number 6. What is the significance of the growth in trade and the rise of towns in the periods of Renaissance? What was the significance? What, what was the impact? What, what changes were brought in because of the significance of trade and rise of town? In the period of Renaissance or in the modern period, the growth in trade got importance of its own. The growth in trade and commerce led to the emergence of a new class in the society, that is the middle class. The middle class had become quite rich due to the growth of trade and commerce. Without the emergence of the middle class, there was none who could shake the two pillars of the Middle Age, the church and the feudalism. Whenever any ruler tried to take any action against the church or the feudal lords, the middle class were always the first to help the rulers. Without the wholehearted support of the middle class, no ruler could ever think of freeing himself from either the church or the feudal lords. Then how could one ever think of the modern time? So, we again are indirectly saying how uh, growth in trade and rise of towns led to the Middle Age, a modern age. Sorry. The rise of the new cities also had a special importance of their own. Many of these cities bought their independence from either the kings or the feudal lords after paying them huge amounts. In this way, many of the cities became independent of the unfair and unjust control of the feudal lords. They provided full liberty to the citizens to think in their own way and to do whatever they liked. All this made it possible for them to leave behind the darkness of the Middle Ages and to step forward towards the bright light of the modern times. Next, how did the crusade and growth of cities help, bring, help in bringing about a renaissance in Western Europe? Out of all, out of all the factors responsible for bringing out Renaissance in Western Europe, the most important are the Crusades and the growth of city. During the Crusades, the Europeans came in contact with the developed culture of the Arabs. They were simply amazed at the prosperity and the luxury of the Arabs, who were also much more advanced intellectually. Through them, they came to know the great wisdom of Plato, Aristotle and other great philosophers. The new ideas inspired them to think freely and gradually they discarded the fetters of superstition and dogmatic narrowness. Most of the fanatic lords and barons were killed during these crusades and so both the institutions of feudalism and the church lost most of their strength and hold on the society. It gave common man an opportunity to think freely. Otherwise, the feudal lords and the fanatic churchmen would never, be able, would never let them break free of the blind faith and the superstition. Next is the growth of cities. The decline of feudalism promoted the growth of cities where trade, commerce and industry grew quite rapidly. As the trading classes had become rich and prosperous, they naturally turned attention to the education of their children. As a result, soon, several schools, colleges and institutions of higher studies like universities were set up. The spread of higher learning struck at the roots of the superstitions because it promoted new ideas. In this way, the New Age Renaissance and an intellectual revolution 
was dawn. Soon, the new cities became the beacons of new learning. So we here we speak about how Renaissance came about and how crusades and growth of cities help in bringing the Renaissance. Now, next question is, what practices of the Roman Catholic Church and churchmen of the 15th and the 16th centuries did the reformers object to? This question can also be asked in another way that mention the evil practices of the Catholic Church in the medieval period that led to a movement against them. Reformers objected and protested against some practices of the Roman Catholic Church. Those practices are number one, they objected to the immoral and luxurious life of the churchmen and their illegal and undesirable methods of extracting money. They raised objections against the practice of selling of the offices of the church to inefficient, immoral and corrupt people whose only qualification was their ability to pay gifts to the Pope and extract money from the people. They also raised their voice against the sale of letter of indulgence to those people who had sinned. But this was highly objectionable because any rich man could escape punishment by buying letters of indulgence. They also protested against the Pope's authority to raise such taxes and fees as would make the Pope and his bishops live in luxury. Voice was also raised against the Church's policy of restricting education only to study Latin alone and so keeping the common man in utter ignorance. So all these were the practices which brought about the Reformation movement. What is meant by the age of discovery and give reasons for the discovery of new routes and lands? By the age of discovery, we mean the period in the world history where new trade routes were explored and several new lands were discovered. This age of discovery extended from last years of the 15th century to the beginning years of the 16th century. Main reasons that promoted these discoveries were, number one, Turkey occupied the old trade routes between India and Europe and consequently the trade on that route became very difficult. Hence, the need for new trade route was felt. Number two, desire for more wealth and trade prom prompted the adventurers amongst the traders and sailors to discover new country. Number three, the zeal of the Christian missionaries to spread their religion in other countries also led them to make new discoveries. Four, the renaissance spirit of curiosity had emboldened the people to explore new land. Five, the invention of the mariner's compass had added to the sailor's confidence, as now they could sail towards the east or in any other direction without being lost in the bad weather, and this also prompted new discoveries. So number one was Turkey occupying the old trade route. Number two was the desire for more wealth. Number three was the zeal of the Christian missionaries to spread their religion. Number four is the renaissance spirit of curiosity. And finally, the mariner's compass. Okay. Next question. What do you understand by mercantilism? And what were its chief effects? Mercantilism was a theory which believed that the wealth of a country depended upon the amount of precious metals like gold that they possessed. 
to acquire wealth according to this theory meant that every country should export the maximum quality, quantity of goods and they should restrict the import so that so that they can increase the gold reserve thus the balance of trade would remain favorable to one's own country and the gold reserve would grow what were the effects of this number 1 as a result of mercantilism colonies were established in asia and america and laws were enacted to control their trade in order to restrict the flow of their gold to any other country except the mother country number 2 the rich traders in these countries formed themselves into big companies to carry on trade with their colonies and to amass wealth at their cost third the middle class became the most important section in the society gradually the members of the middle class played a leading role in the political and religious spheres this answer you will try on your own write a careful account of how the world appeared different to the 17th century europeans write a careful account of how the world appeared different to 17th century europeans now we'll talk about the long answers these are eight marks answers and these must be written at least as one and a half page first is discuss the causes of renaissance in europe we've discussed two by far the crusades we discussed and we also discussed the rise of the new towns okay so i will first uh, list out the points there are eight points number 1 is Turkish victory over Constantinople number 2 is crusades third is the decline of feudalism fourth is the rise of free towns fifth is the geographical explorations sixth is invention of the printing press seventh is the development of science and eighth is turks victory over constantinople I think the first and the last point is the same. Okay, I'll still tell you what to write in it, so then later on you can bifurcate. Now, Constantinople was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, and it was a great center of Greek and Roman cultures. It fell into the hands of the Turks in 1453, and many Greek writers were forced to shift to Rome with their manuscripts. there they began to spread greek knowledge and culture and in this way they revived the interest of people in the study of greek philosophy science art and literature the revival of learning of the greek classics paved the way for the renaissance number 2 crusades we have already spoken about this that they brought people of europe in contact with asia and the civilization and culture of asia was highly developed ideas of the east stirred the man's imagination and minds it widened their outlook on life and destroyed the blind faith and the dogmatic attitude they stopped believing anything which did not appeal to their reasoning third decline of feudalism the decline of feudalism gave a great relief to the peasants craftsmen and traders and developed in them a spirit of free thinking which greatly helped in the rise of renaissance fourth rise of free towns the crusades and the decline of feudalism encouraged trade and industries and led to the establishment of free and flourishing towns and to the rise of the middle class which played an important role in europe these towns they grew into wealthy renaissance cities 
which became the centers of art and learning. Fifth is the geographical explorations. Columbus discovered America in 1492 and a little later Vasco da Gama discovered a new sea route to India. These geographical explorations and discoveries brought the people of Western Europe into the contact with the people of Asia and thus greatly broadened their outlook and forced them to give up their blind faith. Invention of printing press. Before the invention of printing press, it was very difficult to spread knowledge because books were handwritten and they were also extreme costly. Knowledge was the privilege of the wealthy people only. But things changed with the invention of printing press. The first printing press was set up in Germany in 1465 AD by Glattenberg. Later on, Caxton introduced it in England and printing presses were also later on set up in Italy and in Hungary. They helped publishing books in large numbers and the books now reached the common people and went a long way in spreading knowledge. Increase in education also gave great impetus to the literature activities of the Renaissance and widened the mental horizon of the people. Development of science. Development of science created the spirit of inquiry and encouraged original thinking on scientific life. It gave a severe blow to old beliefs, blind faith, dogmatic attitude and superiority of the church. Roger Bacon contemplated the use of horse leg of horseless carriages and flying machines. Leonard placed before the people his new scientific ideas and discoveries fearlessly. Copernicus proved that the earth moves around the sun. Galileo invented the telescope. These inventions broadened the mental outlook of the people and put an end to the old beliefs and traditions. Eighth point is the Turks' victory of Constantinople. Constantinople was the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire and was the center of Greek and Roman cultures. It contained valuable manuscripts of the Greek and the Roman writers. But when Constantinople fell into the hands of the Turks, many Greek writers were forced to shift to Europe and their manuscripts. Rome then became the center of the Greek culture and has been rightly remarked that Greece has not fallen, she has migrated to Italy. They began to spread Greek knowledge and culture and in this way they revived the interest of the people in the study of Greek philosophy, science and art and literature. The revival of the learning of great classics paved the way for Renaissance. So I think the first and the last point were the same. We can omit the last point. So we have seven points in all. With this, I end today's class. Next class, we start with the second question. Narrate the origin of Renaissance in Italy and what were the different causes for its origin in Italy. With this, I end today's class. Children, stay home, stay safe, take care, keep learning. Thank you.